Hello, everyone, and welcome to How I Built This Live. Uh, we are here to talk about how businesses are building resiliency right now in, in light of the situation. Um, we're also taking your questions, so please start asking away in the comments section. Um, I am super excited for my guest today, Tristan Walker. He's the founder of Walker & Company. Um, they're probably best known for uh, their bevel razor and their personal care products for men and women of color. If you haven't heard Tristan Walker's episode of How I Built This, after this Facebook Live is over, go and listen to it. It's so joyful and wonderful and full of surprises. And Tristan is just it's one of the best episodes ever. So please go listen to it. Um, and he's here with me right now. Tristan, welcome to the show. Welcome. What's up, guy? <laughs> Glad to be here, man. How's so it going? Good. So good to see you. I miss you. I, I, I wish we were in together. You are in, you're in Atlanta at your home right now, right? I am, and this too shall pass. We will be together very soon, I promise. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about just kind of your, your sort of personal situation. I've been following you on Instagram and seeing pictures of your kids and um, yeah. your son, Avery, and, uh, I'm, and you've got two little ones, and you're running a business. Just how are you coping personally? Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, my, my feelings are really ebbed and flowed extremely through gratitude and kind of empathy you know i'm grateful to have a you know, healthy family that's safe um a team of folks um that's safe and, and healthy as well um you know i have two children as you know um my smallest one is about to be one year old right um he started crawling it, i saw he, he started crawling you know milestone so it's great to be able to experience that uh, throughout all of this as well uh, and to be able to spend so much time with my family, it is a joy, and I'm incredibly uh, grateful uh, to be able to experience it throughout all of this kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it's um, it's weird, right? Because and, and by the way, while Tristan and I while we're talking, please you know submit questions on Facebook for Tristan and questions about business, because obviously Tristan has got ideas of of how how he's dealing with his business. We'll talk about that in a sec, but. It's sort of it's sort of weird, right? You've I, I have like these mixed feelings because on the one hand, this is an incredible time, like concentrated amount of time that I'm spending with my family. You know, shut in, cooking, cleaning, sweeping, mopping, um, dishes, laundry. They go to bed. More of that. Um, yeah. There's a kind of routine to it, and and a, a beauty to it, right? Like all this time, but at the same time, like there are half a million people in this country who are homeless, who don't, who can't shelter in place at home. You know, there are. Right. There are millions of people who have to work because without a paycheck, they can't eat. And it's just so, it's this weird thing, you know, like looking at people's Instagram accounts and all the food they're baking. And it's, of course, it's incredible, but right. there's a whole other America out there that is just, you know, being just devastated right now. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all vulnerable to it. Right. And I think the thing that this makes us realize is that we're all human, Right. Um, and this is where empathy matters most. Um, it's important to realize that we're all suffering. We have a shared suffering, but we can all get through it together. And I very much do believe that. You know, it's not only the you know, folks who are homeless who can't necessarily shelter in place. Um, it's also the folks who are disproportionately impacted by this stuff. I think about the folks that we serve, folks of color, um, yeah. who are su supremely kind of disproportionately impacted by this stuff uh, with kind of pre-existing health conditions, uh, living in densely populated areas. Um, so I care uh, a great deal, um, you know, for them, uh, and you know, it's something that we're all going to have to get through together. Uh, yeah. But I am reminded uh, that you know, showing empathy throughout this entire process actually does matter, right? Um, and it's important that we continue to kind of see that through throughout this entire crisis. Yeah, um, I mean, I was just reading about Michigan, where you know, what fifteen, fourteen percent of the population is African American, forty percent of the deaths. Yeah, nineteen have been people of, of. I mean, prisons, nursing homes, yeah. right? It's it's it is a very serious issue um, that needs a hell of a lot more attention. Um, and I am uh, deeply disheartened by it, um, but you know, hopeful that we can all band together uh, in support uh, of them. Tristan, earlier this year, just like, well, like six or seven weeks ago, you introduced a whole new line of of <laughs> head to toe products yeah. for men of color, um, just like deodorant and body wash and face cream and shaving cream, like all this stuff. I mean, you, you guys were just all over the place. Um, first of all, tell me about what the situation is like for your business right now. I mean, you, you were just on this rocket ship um, starting this year with this huge product launch. 
what's going on? Yeah, so I mean, you know, all businesses start with its people, right? So first and foremost, uh, when this started to happen, we've been making sure that our people were taken care of, right? Um, so, you know, we um, started work from home about four, close to five weeks ago, um, kind of we saw this coming and wanted to jump ahead of it. Um, but I had to very quickly realize um, that we all had very different situations, right? Um, much like me, I had two kids at home. I had to kind of moonlight, uh, quote unquote, as a, a pre-K teacher now, <laughs> right, uh, in support of the business. Um, so we had to change the way that we think about work. Uh, not only everybody's working from home um, and kind of working with each other in a remote way, but how can we be more collaborative, right? Um, so one of the first things that I encourage everybody to do, and this is kind of about modeling the way, you know, I had to block out the sections in my calendar where I just could not participate in work, right? Um, my kids needed to complete their schoolwork, um, and I needed to afford them the time to do that. And I encouraged all of my teammates to do the same. Um, and since then, I think uh, there's been an appreciation across the board uh, around how we've been able to support each other. Uh, and frankly, as a result of it, um, you know, the business has been doing just fine. In fact, um, when we think about, you know, online orders, uh, folks are still buying from us. In fact, we're probably three, four X, uh, our daily sales, uh, online up yeah. <laughs> since the start of this, right? Um, and I think it's just folks transitioning from, you know, going to stores to potentially buy our product to buying it online. Um, so we haven't seen too much of an aberration, um, in the business thus far. Uh, but the thing that's most important, regardless of any of that stuff, is that our people are safe and well. Uh, and I am I'm fortunate, uh, at least to hear so far, that they are. And then the last thing that I'd say is it's also important, you know, we're working really, really hard that they get their rest, right? Um, you know, I already encouraged them this week, even, uh, yesterday and today, to take the day off, um, just to really reflect, spend some time with loved ones themselves, um, so that we can come back in on Monday, uh, yeah. freshened, so to speak. But it, it starts with the people. Yeah, for sure. Tristan, um, for a lot of people watching, you know, they're running businesses, small businesses, and, and you know what it was like to have a small business because you started, yeah. your business started out. Still do. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you kind of like keep morale up, right? We're all on Zoom calls. We're all, I mean, you just mentioned how some calls you got to jump off because, you know, like your, your kids and I've got kids and doing distance learning and, how do you keep the morale going? We have a daily meeting for the High Beltus team at 7, um, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And, yeah. um, you know, we're all kind of, it's just it's just a way to connect. But um, it's hard, you know, because we, we're used to seeing each other all the time and, and the team has lunch together every day. And what are you, what are ways that you can think of to kind of keep the morale going, like with, with your team, for example? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard but doable. Um, and, you know, we have to consider based on what I just mentioned, doing it asynchronously, right? Folks have their own unique schedules. Thank goodness for things like, you know, Slack and text message, among other things, right? Um, you know, we have folks sharing kind of what they're watching during the quarantine, uh, what hobbies they're learning, what drink recipes they're learning, <laughs> right? Um, and, you know, we also have other channels of engagement. We see what folks are doing with their children on Instagram, right? Um, and we can engage with them there. Uh, it, so for us, it hasn't really required a daily fixed time of engagement. Right. Because we're still working throughout the day and speaking with each other. Um, but I think, again, our, our respect for each other's schedules, our respect and transparency for what's going on. Um, you know, some of this is really important to tell people the truth. Right. Um, if you believe it's going to persist longer than it is, let people know that. Right. Let them know where your position is and tell them what you're going to do in response to that. Um, so, you know, having people take some time off, respecting schedules, um, but also sharing some of the things that they're learning in good moments, I, I think, is, is refreshing. How are you able to reassure people who are nervous about, I don't know, their job prospects or their economic situation? Like, are you guys able to retain everybody and, and avoid layoffs for now? Oh, yeah, we have. Um, you know, we're fortunate, um, again, to also, you know, in a partnership with Procter & Gamble. Right. Um, we were very, very fortunate, but also recognize uh, that not everyone has that luxury. You know, I had a friend who told me something that stuck with me during this time. Even though it feels unprecedented, it's not unprecedented. Uh, we've been through, you know, you think about the 2008 crisis, right? Um, all types of recessions. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we always need to prepare for, right? Um, you know, it's a lesson for all of us uh, to learn how we can prepare, prepare for situations like this, whether it be kind of cash preservation, um, you know, ensuring that you have a kind of tight, loyal, excited, hopeful, mission-oriented team. Um, and the rest is, you know, you just got to do the work, right? Yeah. Follow a strategy that matters. But 
um, you know, the thing that I can say at least is be hopeful uh, and know that, you know, this is temporary, right? It might last a little bit longer than expected, um, but it is temporary and there is light at the end, I believe. Sure. So we're getting questions um, from, from viewers. Um, so let me start with, um, uh, with actually, there's a, there's a great question from, from Neil Allen, because I don't think we've talked about this enough. Um, but just, just tell us a little bit about your products and, and, and sort of, um, you know, what, what you offer. I, I think it's important, right? Because they're personal grooming products. A lot of us yeah. are, um, yeah. we can do these things. Like we can shave and um, yeah, we, can yeah. our faces. we can't cut our hair. I mean, I guess we could. Um, in yeah. fact, some, some members oh, yeah. have, With our products, have tried yeah. it. Um, this is a challenge for a lot of people, but um, just kind of describe um, some of the products that you guys make and, um, and, and, and create. Yeah, totally. You know, you talked about gratitude earlier. I can't tell you how much I miss my barber. <laughs> uh, I can't wait till this is all over. Right. I know. Um, so, so Walker and Company is um, kind of known for making health and beauty simple for people of color. You know, as Guy said, uh, we are most well known for our Bevel brand. Um, Bevel aims to be the number one trusted um, brand delivering personal care solutions to black men in the United States. Uh, we offer a range of shaving products, body products, hair care products, uh, and skin care products. So true head-to-toe grooming solutions uh, for folks who need it, right? Um, and, you know, it's, it's been fascinating with each day since we've um, kind of started work from home, the sales of our product have increased because I think some of that is folks actually realizing the seriousness of the situation yeah. um, and, you know, you know, taking things for granted, like being able to go to the store to buy these essential products uh, that we need, right? You know, some some part of this, at least as we think about our own self care, right? Uh, we want to feel good, we want to look good, right? And that kind of aids in in our own kind of personal self care. And I think Bevel um, is showing and providing a solution for people to feel that and continue to feel that throughout this. Right? Yeah, I went to um to Target like just as this thing was was breaking, you know, it was starting out here in the Bay Area. I went to the Target in Emeryville, um, yeah. and like. All the bevel, I just checked it. I just checked it out. All like all the bevel products, from, you know, like all the. Yeah, items. that's that's one of our our best stores, by the way. That's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. It's yeah. gone. Everything was gone. Um, well, fortunately, you know a guy, so we'll, we'll get you some stuff. <laughs> um, I, here's a question from Michael Peterson. Um, what what advice would you give to somebody? This is a great question because you've been there. Um, what advice would you give to somebody starting out in this current climate? Yeah. Um, you know, I think we talked a little bit about this during uh, the How I Built This episode live. Um, so know your why, right? This is really an important time uh, to not start a business just to start a business, right? Um, and, you know, one theme during our conversation, Guy, was really feeling like you're uniquely positioned to do the thing that you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's not necessarily uh, the financial potential benefit of doing that. It's... Um, the, the happiness and the joy that you find in times of um, great success and potential failure, right? You persist. Um, and it's really critical um, that you actually know your why is why you're doing it, right? And it, it sounds so simple. It sounds almost aloof. Um, but I can't tell you how many times folks don't really understand the answer to that question, right? Um, and when you kind of answer it for yourself, ask yourself it again. Answer it again and ask it again, right? <laughs> Um, and you know, everything will fall into place if you feel that you're uniquely positioned to do the thing that you're doing, right? This yeah. stuff will pass. Um, and you know, the way that you start your company will be the same as when, you know, this thing passes too, right? Uh, and you will have acquired a bunch of learnings to be more successful on the other side. Yeah. And by the way, the, the, the start with your why idea that was codified in a book by Simon Sinek, start, yeah. um, start with why he's going to be on this show. Awesome. In a couple of week from now, so Simon will be here to talk about some of that stuff. Um, thank you for that question. Um, this is a question from uh, Tara Giacomozzi. Um, What about productivity tips? I mean, obviously, we're all balancing different, you know, different situations. You've got kids at home, and and you know, you've got to look after them and run a business and stay productive. I have to say that I have found myself. I, I found I found like being productive. I, I've been a lot more productive lately, in part because I'm not traveling. You know, yeah. I'm, here, I'm at home, I'm working all the, t every moment of the day is work and being with my family. It's, it's kind of intertwined, yeah. but like with, for you, how do you, how are you able to kind of stay productive? 
Yeah, I remember when I was in high school, um, there was this exercise that was given to us. You know, I went to high school that's fairly rigorous academically and all that jazz, and all the students would always complain about how much work they had and how little time they had. Um, and, you know, the exercise was very simple. It had um, a sheet, it had every hour of the day, right, from midnight to midnight. Um, and then you just block out what you're doing during those times, right? So eight hours of that time is sleep. Let's say four hours, five hours of that time is class, right? Um, then another, let's say three hours of that time was studying, right? There's still left over something like six, seven hours of the day <laughs> that can actually be used productively. Uh, and you realize how much time is wasted uh, doing things that you don't necessarily need to do. You know, throughout this time, you know, I have my sons at home. I have to, you know, do their continuous learning, that sort of thing. But also I had to realize for myself, I am not a, a, a trained pre-K teacher, right? I do what I can, right? Um, I do what I can and we make best efforts, my wife and I, um, to do as well as we can. Um, but during the times, those six, seven hours of free time that you don't really recognize, you know, it's taking care of yourself, right? Forget about productivity at work because that's already accounted for in those hours that we had to talk about. Take time for yourself. What is the hobby? I read a lot. Right. Um, and I make time for myself. Right. Uh, and it's really important to really stick that stake in the ground and make sure everybody else is aware of it, too. And I think that is really critical. Um, you know, when I mentioned a little earlier how we, you know, you have to model the way and block out time so the other team members can actually see that. You know, I think that applies across the board, whether that be at work, family, friends, et cetera. Um, but if you just do that very simple exercise, you'll be surprised yeah. <laughs> by how much time you have to do the things that you didn't think that you had time to. I know that you're a big fan of like stoicism and, and sort of Greek and Roman philosophy and Marcus Aurelius and meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you, is there something you're reading now that I don't know is, is kind of just helpful? Yeah. I mean, I just, um, I, like literally, an hour ago, finished the Seneca book. Uh, it's a book on essays, essays on morals, um, but specifically on gratitude, funny enough. Um, and, you know, just to be able to get introspective and really think about, um, especially during this time, how we just be better humans, right? Um, you know, sometimes we retreat back to, you know, how can I be the best CEO that I could be? Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to realize that you're still a human, right? <laughs> Uh, you need to make everybody else realize that you're still a human. Um, and I found myself being a much better CEO uh, when I can reflect on my own humanness um, and kind of the virtues that would make folks want to follow me and the mission and kind of care about it. Um, but that's what I'm reading. I have a hell of a lot more I'm reading, but um, you know, I, you've got to take the time to do it. Yeah. Tristan, this is a question from... Um uh, Chris Beers and, and please keep your questions coming. They're great. Um, just put them in the comment section and we'll try to get to, to all of them as many of them as we can. Um, Chris Beers asks, how do you think this pandemic is going to change the future of your business and the things you do? Um, I mean, we know this is temporary, but I think it's probably not a, a, a sort of outlandish to say this is a, this is a major shift. This is going to yeah. change everything about everything. Um, yeah. how, is it, how, do you, how do you imagine it's gonna change your business? Yeah, I think it's, um, I, I try and take a, a kind of more um, global worldview, right? Um, you know, since we last spoke, I joined the board of Foot Locker, it's an $8 billion kind of global company, right? And the kind of perspective that I have is somewhat markedly different than what I had before it. I'm a part of Parker & Gamble, right? And $70, $80 billion revenue company that serves 5 billion people around the planet, right? So I get to, you know, see um, kind of top down what this looks like. I think we're all going to be impacted um, in uniquely interesting ways, right? Um, but let me go back to, you know, this idea of humanness, the way we interact with each other, right? After this, are we going to keep shaking each other's hands, <laughs> right? Um, right? Are we going to... Um, you think about the comfort of working from home, you know, this idea of four day work week, five day work week. Now you can't work from home. You can't be more productive. Um, you know, we're finding, and I see this kind of across the board. Some people actually might like it, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you know, what does this mean for, you know, um, our appreciation of each other, right? I am craving for human interaction right now. I, I really, really am. Right. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it makes you realize the things you took for granted before. Um, and we're all going to have to actually expect everything to change. I fundamentally believe everything is going to change. Yeah. And I actually think that's a good thing. Yeah. 
No, I know it's crazy. I mean, like hugs, right? Like I, I, you know, I mean, we were like our team, we hug, you know what I mean? It's all those things. Like, it's just so crazy to imagine how we are going to interact and in, in, in yeah. with formal and informal settings. Um, this is a question, question from Andre. He's 12. He's from Malta. He's watching in Malta. Oh, cool. Um, awesome. um how, like, how are you continuing with production and deliveries? And I should mention for those who, who, who missed um, Tristan on the podcast in 2018, um, Procter & Gamble bought Walker and company. So Tristan is the president CEO of the companies on the board of Procter & Gamble, but um, Procter & Gamble is the mothership now, which in, in a lot of ways has built resiliency, right? If you were a startup on your own, you might be in big trouble right now. That's Having right. Procter & Gamble be behind you actually gives you some s stability and security. So so back to, to Andre's question, um, how, are you, how are you dealing with, with just producing the product and, and getting it out to customers? Yeah, so, I mean, this idea of stability, security, and um, things being unprecedented, but not really. Park & Gamble's been around for 180 years. They've seen this sort of thing, yeah. right? They started as a smaller company and became something that was not small, right? Um, so the ability to learn around what resilience really means for a company that's been around for so long is an inspiring one. So I, I want to kind of make that, make that clear. Um, as far as production, um, you know, we are subject to the same issues that most others are, right? I mean, a lot of our production comes from places like Asia and Europe, et cetera. Um, and for some of our component parts, um, they, they might be delayed, right? Um, you know, we have one product right now that's on delay until June. It was one of our kind of top products. What is it? Um, it's actually our T-Blade uh, that connects with our trimmer. Right. And we're finding ways to kind of... Um, get it to our consumers more quickly but again this goes back to being transparent with your consumers about what's going on and, and frankly and fortunately we're in a position where everybody can understand yeah you know um, and i think that's really important um, while we're humans our consumers are too and they understand what's going on uh, and we are all suffering from this it's not unique to walker and company it's not unique to Procter and gamble it's not unique to foot locker it's not unique to any of us um, but there are lessons to be learned out of this, right? You got to manage your demand better. You got to diversify your production, right? You got to, you know, hoard more cash in the future. Um, so, you know, I think of everything as an opportunity for learning, um, as opposed to the potential um, issues that you're dealing with in the present. You know, I was talking to Jenny Britton Bauer of Jenny's Splendid Ice Cream a couple weeks ago on this show, um, and she said, uh, you know, it's it's what's actually interesting is that we're so busy. We're, we're always like rushing around at, and, and you know this better than anyone running a company um, that there's very rarely time to just stop and innovate and to just think about, just think deeply because to come up with new ideas or new products just requires time and like yeah. headspace. Right. Um, and so she's experimenting, you know, with like new ice cream flavors in her kitchen. Yeah. Right? That's her yeah. test kitchen for Jen. Are like, are you finding that, that you're actually, you actually have some space right now to, to do some of that thinking? Uh, we have no choice, <laughs> right? Um, and I think some of it, I mean, innovation doesn't really happen sitting in a kitchen and hoping for the best, right? Um, the way I think about it, it requires some physical activity, right? I walk around kind of the block around my house multiple times without any phones, uh, without any music, right? Um, and things may or may not pop up, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it took Walker and Company 30 years to get the idea to do it, <laughs> right? Um, you know, from the so, time you were from the time you were a kid, from, yeah, from the time that I was born until it happened, yeah. right? Um, but you know, that was a result of kind of living life and having things kind of fall into my lap and understanding that there was an opportunity. It's no different today. You have to just afford yourself time to be able to look outward, right? Um, and you can't necessarily only do that from your kitchen. If you have to, there are ways to you know, read up more on things that are potentially not tied to your business, right, to give you inspiration, right? If you can get out, get out, do some physical activity with some masks, by the way, <laughs> do some physical activity and just think, right, without any distraction. Um, so we're forced to to have to innovate um, because everybody will be. Yeah. Um, and if we're not doing it, um, you know, I don't want to be not the leader anymore, <laughs> right? Um, it is just critical that, you, we have to make the team assume and expect everything to change. Yeah.
So much of what your like brand is about is human connection, like your beautiful video. All of it. And, right. And like, I just like a couple of weeks ago, you were like a, I don't know, it was a convention center doing, um, gr- you know, it was like a barbershop that you set up in a convention center. So cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, you know, touching, you know, touching people, right. And people touching their faces and people kind of showing people how to use your products. And I mean, we kind of alluded to this earlier, but I mean, does some of that change? Does, does that human touch and human connection change? I, I hope not. Um, it just may be, it may not have all the same norms that originally um, you expected, right? Or it, uh, all the same norms that you had had up until this point, I should say. Um, I'm still going to be going to my barber, <laughs> right? Getting my hair cut right. because I sure yeah. as hell need it. Um, but, you know, I think... Um, those norms are thought of on both sides, right? Um, you know, there's a principal and client relationship, right? Um, that my barber has with me as I have a principal and client relationship with our consumers. We need to be thoughtful about, you know, how we package things, right? Um, you know, she might need, need, my barber might need to be thoughtful about, you know, the sanitizing stuff, right? All that jazz, right? Uh, or more thoughtful about it because, you know, she's already pretty thoughtful about it. But we just need to think about the second, dairy, tertiary impacts of, um, you know, how we interact with our clients, which is good for everybody anyway, right? Um, and it may be the case that our social interaction becomes stronger as a result, um, and we can get closer, right? Because those expectations um, are no longer assumed, right? Um, so, you know, I'm hopeful um, that it does change for the better, but it sure as hell will change. Um, this is a question from uh, Vincent Brathwaite. Um, out, of the, out of all the books that you've read, one, which one influenced the way you do business and which one influenced your personal life? Oh, interesting. Um, so it's probably only one business book. Um, is that a lot of them tend to be very pop culture which I don't really like too much, but there's one um, business book that really helped me think about how to be a better just CEO day to day. Um, and it's high output management by Andy Grove. Um, and, um, he's very good at distilling why you need quantitative and qualitative metrics in the assessment of your people or output, et cetera. And, you know, so the perfect example, um, you know, I might tell, you know, my operations leader that we need to reduce our cost of our razor 25%, right? Well, it would be easy for that person to just turn our razor into plastic and hope for the best, right? <laughs> Uh, but you got to have a qualitative check against that, right? So ensure that returns don't go up 10%, right? Yeah. Um, so they really taught me that, you know, business is a balance of quantitative and qualitative, um, which can apply to every single KPI that you have in the business. Um, I think personally, um, you know, one of the, the best books that I read was um, Race Against the Machine, uh, written by an MIT professor. I can't remember if we spoke about this during, during our um, yeah. chat guy. But, um, you know, the professor really talked about this gap between the rich and the poor um, being as stark as it's ever been. Um, you know, you have this 1%, 99% issue going on, uh, and there is no middle class. And I fundamentally believe that to be true. Uh, and it, the idea is that folks at the top are leveraging technology in ways to make them a hell of a lot more productive, right? While folks in the yeah. 99% are not, right? Um, so how can I actually help to close that gap? Right. Uh, to ensure that we're all participating in this, this new innovation economy. And the reason, you know, one would think that that's like um, impactful as a business leader, but it really does change the way I think about everything. Right. Um, the types of businesses I want to create and to whom. Right. Um, the types of ways we think about uh, making technology more human and more relatable. Right. To everybody. Right. Um, the respect of diversity around the world, right? And its impact on um, consumerism, among other things, right? Uh, it has fundamentally changed the way my kind of world view uh, yeah. is now, right? It's, it's, um, and it has impacted other things that I read, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm more choiceful and purposeful in the things that I do, recognizing um, this very important issue, which I think is one of the most important in the world. Um, really, really quickly before we, we wrap up, Tristan, um, in five years from now, when you look back at this moment, right, this is a huge test, as I think, as you said earlier, for any company. This is probably the biggest test most companies have ever faced. Um, 
But in five years from now, when you look back on this time, what is the thing that you want to do now or that you, that you do today, that the change you make that makes your business more resilient in five years from now? I don't think that there's a change in so much as my reflecting back on the fact that I was consistent. And, you know, I talk a lot about values, as you know, right? Um, and, you know, we've been through a lot, right? Um, you know, layoffs in the past, right? Down rounds, up rounds, all that stuff. Now we're going through this kind of COVID-19 crisis. Um, and it's important that our people know um, that I am consistent in my judgment, right? Consistent in my courage, consistent in my loyalty to our people, right? And we're doing things that make everybody else realize that that consistency is there. Um, because there'll be another one of these in the future, yeah. right? Whether it's COVID-19 or something else, right? Um, and you've got to really make decisions um, clearly, right? Uh, it's really easy to kind of veer off track a little bit. Um, and I'm most proud when I recognize that I did things that are in line with my values and I was consistent throughout. And that's really the most important message that I would give to anybody, but I would be most proud of my ideas if I reflect back on it. And not only I felt that I was consistent, but the people who supported me through this know that I was being so in so much as their willingness to continue to be led um, into the future. I love it. Um, again, if you haven't heard Tristan's episode on how I built this, go back to our podcast queue. You got to listen to the episode. It's so good. It's so amazing. Your story is incredible. Um, really quick before we go, Tristan, I want to shout out to a couple of people watching Cliff Lefstead and Charlotte, um, Gene Rovio in Union Pier, Michigan, Jacob De, uh, Ledoux in Baltimore, Gary Charles Duncan in Texas, Stephen Collin in Central California. A couple of quick announcements um, uh, before we go. We've got a new episode of How I Built This, uh, the podcast on Monday with the founders of Sweetgreen. We got an update from them just yesterday. It's an amazing story and what they're doing. They're awesome. <laughs> they're awesome. It's incredible. Um, next Wednesday, I'm going to be back here with Gary Erickson, Gary and Kit Erickson, the founders of Cliff Bar. Um, they're sending a lot of cliff bars <laughs> they just donated three million cliff bars people are buying a lot of cliff bars now so um stay tuned for that and then next friday as i mentioned earlier simon sinek author of start with why um will be here it's going to be so awesome um this conversation with tristan is going to be on our podcast next week too so listen out for that Tristan, thank you so much. I, I wish I could be there with you. Next time I'm in Atlanta, I will be there with you. Or when you're here Soon in, enough. in the Bay Area, we're going to hang out. So great to see you. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, it's Walker & Company. Tristan Walker, thank you. Thanks, guys.